The Jim and Ruth Howland Community Open is an annual event that must be experienced in person. This year, over 200 artists from Lynn and Benton counties filled the main gallery and shared their talents with the public. This year, the Howland Open runs through March 18th. Don't miss it. At first glance, the faceless women in this painting could be viewed as somehow detached from the world around them. But when you examine them more closely, you see the artist's sensitivity depicting this quartet of friends sitting together after an emotional and exhausting wedding day. Fatigue, friendship, sympathy, and deep engagement with each other are so clear in their body language that no faces are necessary to make the meaning clear. I found it deeply moving, and it brought back happy memories. Carlota Collette's cabin music is an invitation for me to slip back to childhood and visit my grandpa's remote Alaskan cabin. I hear the call of a loon across the lake, a lapping shoreline gently tumbling round rocks, and the exhale of a herd of caribou on migration. I feel the roughness of red formica peeling off in strips and the predictable slap of my green water boots against my shins as I hurdle tree roots. I am grateful for this respite, grateful for the depth of color and patterns within cabin music that replenish. This little sculpture by Michael Flamez with a city on the back of a snail really hit home with me because it is symbolic of how slowly anything moves at the governmental level. If you have applied for a building permit or have volunteered for a civic committee, then you can probably appreciate the glacial pace of change when interacting with the government. The only thing missing from this piece would be some colorful red tape. Well done, Michael. Cuckoo the Cat is a charming character. Drawn as if it could be a patchwork quilt, it feels like the first in what could be a whole series of cockeyed animals. As a quilter, I would love to carry this idea further myself. The combination of random pieces makes an otherwise symmetrical and simplified cat sitting so primly, a little bit lunatic. It makes me laugh. I was drawn to this piece as soon as I saw it. The glistening red rows of glass shards caught my eye. Then I saw that it was emerging from what seemed to be a sketch of a vase hidden inside a milky, shimmering disk of glass, swimming in soft pastel colors. This is an elegant, subtle piece that seems to be lit from within. My colorful teacher by Alina Sun speaks to me through the young artist's assertive use of her medium, oil pastels, and her impressive perspective on her subject. Her teacher is looking straight at us with stern or wise eyes. Her upper body is moving separately from her lower body as she strides. Her striped dress angles to show the movement. This is quite incredible artistic language for a six-year-old artist. Her colors are applied with confidence, layered for depth and richness. The hearts make me smile and wonder, does the artist love her subject or does she feel loved by her teacher? I met a young member of the Surma tribe last week. His resplendent headdress and striking body paint immediately captured my attention. With his penetrating gaze and expressively clasped hands firmly etched in mind, I continue to ponder his experience of life in Southwest Ethiopia and to imagine how he might view mine in Oregon. This recent acquaintance epitomizes the power of art to expand my world and to help me regard it from a new perspective. Vista by Adele Ackerman shows a scene vivid in my memory growing up in the Rocky Mountains. I saw the foreground surrounding me in the familiar contrast of the aspen's bark and could almost hear the rustle of the leaves. When I moved closer to the piece that I assumed was a print, I realized it was created with watercolors. The mountain is settled beautifully in the background, while the air looks as if it is the breeze shaking the leaves. This vista is a familiar one to me, but created in a beautiful new way. This small landscape warrants a moment for viewers to be still and experience the story within. Perhaps it is tall winter wheat put into rhythmic motion by a passing breeze, or it is signaling clear skies on the horizon and the end of yet another Oregon rainstorm. This simple composition is delightfully fresh, full of texture and movement, 
keeping one engaged and leaning in so they can hear it whisper its tale. In this photograph, we see an expressionless young woman who is simultaneously in focus and obscured. She is something of a ghost, a woman who neither inhabits her body nor the space around her. However, she is more than the subject of this photograph. She's symbolic of our times. Wherever I am, I'm not really there, invites us to question the liminal spaces we all inhabit in this age of technology, one that vacillates between the virtual and the physical. We live in a culture governed by pings and dings. They tug at our attention. They lure us to engage with the world, all the while disconnecting us from our surroundings. They entice us with false hopes for connection, only to leave us feeling more isolated. Noble Rooster is a great photograph, up close and personal with a chicken, more intimate than we're used to or probably even comfortable with. And it's well titled as the bird presents a regal and confident presence, one eye staring down the viewer. The photographer has captured a great perspective and done so with tech sharp skill. I connected with this piece when I met the artist. On face value, the drawing is a layered landscape populated with two animal friends and a star dangling in the sky. But when six-year-old Kira handed me her framed piece, she articulated the true intent of her drawing with great assertiveness. This is a self-portrait, she said, and it should be hung with the other portraits. Her conceptual clarity made me pause and look a little longer. I hope you will look longer too. Carol Chapel's tamales brings me back to my childhood, back to when my grandmother was alive and when Christmases were spent surrounded by family, with my grandmother, the matriarch, painstakingly making pounds upon pounds of masa, while everyone else gathered around the dining table, spreading masa into husks, chatting and sharing life and laughter together. In this painting, I see each woman of my family, past, present, and future. I see tradition and pride. I see the expression of familiar love through food. Looking at the flowing colors on this piece reminds me of the many satellite images that document the melting of the Greenland ice cap or views from my airplane window while crossing high latitudes to reach Europe. The white reminds me of the glacier tongues entering the darker ocean which now absorbs heat rather than reflects it as larger glaciers used to do. The complexity of shoreline structures and their earthly tones remind me of previous times in Greenland when land was cultivated before glaciers took over. The earth has changed and continues to change unfortunately we're now the main drivers of a faster rate of change losing control over the havoc it will wreak on this and future generation. I chose Garden Retreat by Peggy Sharrow as my favorite piece in the Howland. I used to work at OSU cataloging a historic collection of textiles, so I have an appreciation and understanding of textile art. I like the energy and movement in this piece and the capturing of light. Looking at it close up, I appreciate the attention to detail and the softness created by the weaving of the yarns. The small size makes it a, like a memory of a place I would like to go and sit.